Okay, so we've got our brushes all cleaned and ready to go. I have prepped the miniature and sprayed it with our mix of Scrag and Uriel. You can find all the details of this on the Discord. Unfortunately, it is a mix, so everyone's is probably going to vary. It's just an unfortunate part of it. Day two, day two, you subscribed. Thank you so much, Knox, for the support. It's been awesome, dude. Very much appreciated. The first five months that I've seen. Um, yeah, impressive. So this was the, the first one that we did. Um, it was this Stormcast. And it took a, quite a slow amount of time. It took like four or five days. But it, to be fair, it was like a bit of a test for future paint alongs. So this time we decided to do a Space Marine. Uh, from the, uh, what was it, the Getting Started magazine. It comes with a Necron and a Space Marine. So this is the model, like as I'm sure most of you are aware. Um, and we put it up for a public vote in the Discord. And the results came back uh, for the specific chapter um, of Imperial Fist. So here we are. We are painting an Imperial Fist to heavy metal <laughs> levels. So there we go. Okay, let's crack on then. All right, it's gonna be very tricky to tell the difference of this on stream. I'm gonna thin it down quite a lot, this uh, URL. We just wanna kind of glaze it up. So quite thin. Layer it up towards like the areas that are gonna be lighter, but quite slowly. So like the top of knee pads, things like that. The top of legs. I just realized this camera is uh, way off. Okay, it should be better. So yeah, we're just going to concentrate these like thin glazes towards the top of knee pads, other areas like that. This is unfortunate that there's a lot more blending involved with this. It's probably not the best entry point for painting a Space Marine, but this is what you guys voted on. So here we are. Maybe we'll do a more straightforward Space Marine in the future. There we go, just towards the top of knee pads. Just be quite patient with it, quite thin. You can all blame yourselves. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We'll just try and uh, get through this as quickly as we can. This stage, and then we'll get on to the shading and the highlighting. But that's really all that's on the agenda today is to get as far as we can with the yellow. So it might even be quite difficult to tell on stream the difference here. Because uh, the camera struggles a little bit with yellow anyway, but... Logo requires my attention. Hopefully, we'll be back soon. No worries. So, I don't have to be too neat at this stage. Just layer up towards the top of areas, towards the top of panels. 
because that's where our light source is sort of coming from. At the same time, we want it fairly, fairly subtle, I guess. And just build it up quite slowly. Don't be tempted to just blob on the paint or anything, just makes it quite thin. So this is how thin I'm kind of working at the moment. Uh, like this. So it's just like a glazed layer, I guess. Uh, lighten in certain areas and then keeping the base coat in other areas. I want it to be naturally a bit darker, so. Underneath here, I've just left the base coat, so underneath his chest, and just layer in this bit on his stomach a bit brighter. Same with his crotch. Just leaving the shade of the previous, uh, the base coat in the, the regions that are going to be darker. what we're aiming for here is like quite a nice smooth sort of transition when we bring in the shade later on we're going to glaze that in like a very soft shade and the reason why we're kind of layering up first is so that we can judge a bit easier where the shading is going to be. Um, it's very easy to just go in and sort of overshade everything, so that's why I wanted to. Uh, we want to avoid really. It's very difficult to bring it back when you've got yellow. It takes a little bit more work to to lighten it up to get back to the the bright yellow. Yep, towards the towards the top of the leg panels on the bottom of his legs we're just working at the moment just brightening that up so what you should get here is a slight deepening of the color towards the bottom of the legs and the same like under the knees Hey Chris, bright. It is a bright yellow. I mean, the base coat for this isn't that bright. I think, but it's um, I don't know. Maybe it's this camera. I mean, it is Uriel that we're glazing over now, but this is the base coat, which is scrag, scrag brown and Uriel. Uh, I'm guessing people's results are going to vary a little bit here because it is a mix for the first. the first stage. <laughs> Thank you, Saranis, for giving him a shout out. Appreciate that, man. Welcome. Uh, Di Diurak, thank you very much for the follow. So again, towards the top of his collar, it's going to be nice and bright. Uh, you're probably not seeing very much difference there. It's very subtle um, on camera.
Hey, full of paint. Same towards the top of his chest as well. We're kind of just treating these panels as a whole thing, really. So, like, his chest section, we're lightening up towards the top. And, like, under this, che this chest panel is obviously going to be a little bit darker, but... Same with this belt here. Yeah, I think the so the next paint along the wall there will probably be uh, the Necron that comes as part of this. But I mean the same same as with this. If anyone has a uh, just a generic intercessor that's also fine if they want to join in and the same with the necron like if you just have a generic necron warrior then that's also fine i think the necron will be pretty quick to be honest Uh, Scrag Uriel, yeah, yeah. You see we've gone like slightly over with the black there. There is a way that we can sort that out, which is a little bit of Avalon Sunset just over that section and then rebase coat that section. Avalon should go over quite nicely. So yeah, if you do go over any areas with the with the black when you're blacking out these different parts, um, a little bit of Uriel, uh, sorry, a little bit of Avalon first, and then go back over. It's got a lot better coverage. Uh, if you overspill the black, then you have to quit. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, everyone is human. Everyone will. Uh, everyone goes over a little bit. A yellow in general can be a bit of a pain to go back over black. Though really, the trick to yellow is just being uh fairly fairly neat with everything the same with white as well nidge thank you very much for the follow right, just continue layering this up we want a nice solid sort of yellow on all the highlight areas um so we'll just keep building up glazes until we get that towards the top of the knees again it's going to take a little bit of patience this spot same on these feet as well here where we've got like the middle section what we really want here is a nice bright yellow on top then we're going to glaze it down to a little bit of shade towards the bottom of those panels so you just get a nice transition from dark to light to dark again
That's the worst thing about painting yellow, like light colors as well. So if you get a tiny bit of dust in it or something, just the tiniest bit of dust, you got to try and get that out as soon as you can. <laughs> so it's um, any bits of dust or anything are very noticeable on a light color. Yeah, just do your best to remove those. I always find like having a fresh pot of clean water, a nice fresh um, sheet on your wet palette will just help to minimize any uh, any contaminants. Make sure you give your brush a good clean as well. Same with working with white, any, any colors that are in your brush already have the chance to come off and uh, Contaminate a nice clean face go that you put in on. So, I don't know if that really shows up on camera very well, but we're getting a nice, a nice transition there. It's very, very subtle, but just lightening up the yellow slightly. So with these feet, what I'm doing is I'm just really layering up the top of the feet, leading, leaving that uh, that shading in the recess here and around like the front. And because we're glazing that, and yellow is quite nice to glaze with, actually. It's probably one of the better colors to glaze with. Um, the, the fact that it doesn't layer very well means that it's uh, uh, pigment's quite good with glazing instead. So you can build it up in like quite nice thin coats. And just get a nice transition. Normally with the space marine you wouldn't have to do this, I guess. <laughs> Normally we would just be edge highlighting by now, but there's a little bit more involved in this one. Can we just appreciate Dave's gap filling? Can we actually appreciate my gap filling? Because my god, this figure was difficult to fill. You can see, you can see there's a slight one there because I glued this on afterwards so that I could get to all these different areas. But you know what? 
there, there was some there was some gnarly gaps here. It's, uh, still see it slightly, but I did the best that I could. Yeah, I don't know. It was. Uh, oh, look at that! I missed one there. There's a slight bit of a gap there. Oh well, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, I must admit this figure wasn't the easiest to uh, to gap fill. I don't know why it's uh, <laughs> it is an entry level uh, space marine. People enter in the hobby. Just battle damage, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, push fit, not good fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like as I mentioned when we were doing the cleanup for this, uh, you really need to cut off all of the fittings. Um, Because it, yeah, the fittings just never seem to always seem to cause issues. So yeah, best to just trim them off. I think that's hard to see on camera, but there is a transition there. I think it is. The camera does struggle a little bit with uh, with the yellow. So again, around the back and everything, we'll uh, we'll get all this done at the same time. Just start to layer up towards the towards the middle and top of panels, I guess. Try and leave some of that shading, some of the base coat there. Oh, this stage is going to take a while, isn't it? It's going to take a while. Just get comfortable, get into the, uh, get into it for the long haul. Uh, don't forget here if you um if you feel like you've overdone this in any areas you can always go back with the base coat it should glaze a little bit nicer actually over the yellow over the Ural. really it's always nicer to uh, to glaze down rather than glaze up It might take several coats over different areas. You might have to keep going back to them. Just keep lightening them up. So you get that nice solid Ural towards the top of these areas. That's why we're doing it in several glaze stages. Uh, rather than one just 
thick coat is to well, one for the finish and two because we want to slowly build up towards it and get those transitions in it's a nice smooth um yeah a nice smooth transition over the whole thing Okay, so here we go. We're going to go in like really thin to begin with. Um, and we go around the bottom of these knee pads. Really, really thin, just like glazing it in. We want a very soft transition there. And the same towards the bottom of these legs. into the recesses so basically towards the bottom of most panels it's very soft and into all the recesses we're not we're not putting too much on our brush here either because we don't want any watermarks or anything like that we're not applying it as a wash we're using it very very controlled just to begin with. Uh, sometimes I have these chalky watermarks in my glazes. How can I avoid that? Is it too thin down? Um, there's probably too much paint on your brush um, and it, it's pooling so what you want it, 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 there's no limit to how thin a glaze can be really I mean you could be glazing literal water but the difference is is that there's too much paint on your brush so this is too much paint we, we don't want a wash so we, we want to take out all of that paint so it's literally just just wet to the touch your brush basically and then when you pass over any surface it almost instantly dries because that's how thin the paint is on there all we're seeking to do is to tint the surface yeah don't let it pull like Hendarin says so the, there's absolutely no limit to how thin you can go with a glaze that's why it's really good for it's a very controlled way of building up um, shading or of creating transitions it's how much paint you have on the brush I'd say that's still probably too much you see we're getting a little bit of pooling there like here we want it very 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 thin and by thin I mean not much on your brush basically So what I often do is I, I will check on my thumb to see how much, see that's too much, that's gonna pull. So we wanna take out, squeeze out most of that uh, before we apply it to the miniature. So all we're doing is just tinting the surface very subtly. And this is, this is probably even too subtle for the camera to pick up. I can see it in real life, but it's probably too subtle because the camera does struggle with things like yellows, so. So we're gonna continue, yeah, continue to do this around some of those areas where we want it to be a bit more shading, like the bottom of the knees. It's building up slowly. And 
Uh, you feel the pain we were saying earlier. This is perhaps more for like Golden Demon, less for like an army, I guess, because you're going to have problems keeping this uh, consistent. Hey, Zobo. So it's very much about patience, really, with um, with glazing. You just apply them very, very thin. Just let it dry before you come back to it. Otherwise, you will get tear marks. Uh, tiny bit of something in my paint there. It's annoying. You can't even see it on camera. It's fine. It'll be fine. Have I missed much? Um, well, not really. You missed a couple of hours. We're only a couple of hours in so far. So we're just doing a bit of soft shading now. Um, we've glazed up to Uriel, which took a while. Now we've got a nice punchy yellow. Um, we're just starting to glaze a bit more of the shading in. This is very like thin shades of Deathclaw. And probably want to go a bit more around the bottom of the feet with this. So we get a nice subtle um, increase in shading around the bottom of the feet. So yeah, just being patient at this stage and just uh, slowly building it up, letting it dry, keep working around the model. Like I say, we'll do, we'll, we will do a space frame one day without shading, without, um, sorry, without glazing anything too much because I, I do realize this is uh Perhaps a, a little bit more advanced um, than some people were hoping for. Uh, getting into the swing of it now, good. Mine looks nothing like yours, but that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. The thing is, like, there's probably not going to be two that look the same because we're doing a lot of glazing. We've done a mix for the first, for the base coat. So there's going to be some natural variations there. Variations in the way that people paint as well, so. What matters, Tanith, is that you're happy with the end result or that you enjoyed the process. Maybe you learnt something. I mean really if you can if you can master like doing glazes like this, you can there's nothing that you can't really do, to be honest. I mean glazing is like the final boss for a lot of people though. Because you need such like fine control of the paint of the, of the pigment. It's, um, yeah, once you understand glazing, you, you're on your way. Uh, something you can do if you want this to be easier is just to glaze the Uriel as a chunky. Yeah, yeah, you could just yeah you could just do a chunky highlight of the Uriel. Um, so just like concentrate into all the 
the all the normal edges that you would the Uriel. This is going to look even better once we get on the, the deep shade. Um, everything's going to start to pop a lot more. Uh, variations on how people paint, yeah, like you paint well and I paint well. <laughs> uh, laddie, yeah, you will get there. All right, I, I'm not, I'm really not as high as you hold me to. Uh, there, there are people who are way better at glazing than me. Like I'm gonna be honest, this, uh, the the point is here. Like, there's nothing that you can't that you guys can't really master. It's just. I'm sure you've glazed stuff before, laddie. Like you work professionally as a as a painter. Like I'm sure you've. I think you're you're a bit too harsh on yourself. Uh, the real paint along was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like a big journey, and we'll get to the end of it stronger people, right? <laughs> It might just be something subtle that you learn from each one though. Say, you know, like even if it's just about glazing in this one, and I, I realize it's a slightly, you know, it's not an entry point thing for people. It might well put people off or people might struggle with this. But if you really want to aim for that like top end paint job, glazing is, is so important. Um, All those like subtle transitions that you see people do, like smooth blending and stuff like that. I I can pretty much guarantee you most of the time it's, it's some glazes were involved. Frenemies. <laughs> Enemies we made. I mean, I've, sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because people in here, like people in this Discord and stuff are insanely talented anyway. They're probably looking at my work and going, no, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. It's weird as well, because I uh, glazing was never something that I was taught. I just naturally came to it. <laughs> it's not like you join the heavy metal team and then suddenly like everyone teaches you how to do things. It just... I often feel glazing is more of a patience test. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's lots of like thin coats going back to it. But if you, as long as you just work, keep working around the model, you don't need to wait for that, for anything to dry. You just keep, keep working, keep everything thin, keep concentrating it towards the areas that you want to be darker, the, the bottom of panels, any recesses, stuff like that. It is a bit of a patience test, but so is a lot of pain, really. I think it's it's down to like your state of mind as well. Sometimes when you go into it, if you if you start out a project and you're like, okay, I, I'm going to do this the best I can. I'm going to take some time over it and just really get into just the enjoyment of just just painting just for the sake of it, I guess. Um, so a lot of that is very much down to your state of mind. It just, just get into it. Realize you're going to be there for the long haul. Get settled down. Get some nice painting done. Uh, 
I mean, there's some days that like I'd be just edge highlighting for 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 weeks on end. You know, it's just like it would just be like edge highlighting blue for weeks on end. And to a lot of people, that's really like that's really tedious and that, understandably, you know. But it's just about sticking with it to to get the end product. Might even be tempted to go for a finer brush with this. We want to keep this very controlled, so uh, I've got a finer brush. Give this one a go. And this is the bit where we want to be the most controlled, I guess. So I'm using fairly thin paint as well when I do this, so it's like this kind of consistency. That should just help it to flow into the recesses a bit more. Uh, the song makes me want to go listen to some <laughs> to some real music. What do you mean? Are you saying this isn't real music? Uh, not gonna lie, just the base coat was stepping out of my comfort zone because I never mix paint, so the rest of this should be interesting. Yeah, like once you get past that stage, it's a lot more straightforward. So once you're out of that stage, you're out of the woods sort of thing. Um, at least for most people, I guess, edge highlighting is going to be fairly straightforward. I think it's the glazing stuff and like yeah all that that might might be uh kind of difficult for for people well, judging by your work in progress like uh, of everyone is uh, no one's particularly struggling struggling with this looking good so far.
All right, we're not going to worry too much about inside of here yet. I'm coming, come to doing that later on the inside of the neck, but concentrate on the outside first. I must admit, like, the inside of Space Marine legs are probably, like, my least favorite area to paint. Okay, it's looking alright so far. We're getting there. And really, you could spend a long time just at these stages, just, um getting them smooth if you really want to before moving on and highlighting it's quite difficult to get the shade in there so Sometimes what I just do is just the water down the shade and just try and drop it in there. And then tidy up afterwards if we need to. Okay, I think we're starting to get somewhere with this now. It's interesting, I, like a lot of the shading is not showing up on stream. Hmm. There is actually a lot of shading towards the bottom of these panels, but it doesn't really show up. Interesting. Let's see if I can take another picture and uh, put it on the Discord for everyone as reference here. Uh, yellow and white are a pain to show the shade on video. Yeah, absolutely. I had the same problem with I was painting the uh, the apothecary. Also, metallics as well. Had a lot of issues when we were painting this guy. Uh, just didn't show up very well at all. Yeah. Everything's reflective with metallics as well. Uh, this music gets me so hyped. <laughs> I have to just keep on working on it. Keep working away. We got like another half an hour. I'm gonna um, stop shading it about then. And see how far we get in half an hour. That's the deadline that I'm giving myself. And get on and do the uh, the highlights after that. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break at four o'clock.
It's funny because I'm I feel like I'm painting more for the camera than what it actually looks like in reality. Feels like I've I don't know shading more than what I would do normally just because I'm trying to get it to show up on camera. But. Uh, I'm always shocked when I check my clocks on how much time I spent on Imperial Fist uh, for just recess shading and edge highlight and yeah I guess that is most of the thing on on yellow is getting that shading neat really same with um, with white actually like I remember spending a long time just on that apothecary because the shading is so subtle on it and it shows up the shading so much it just means you got to be like really smooth with it and everything so just yeah everything feels like it takes a bit longer it's like the complete opposite of black really isn't it where you can just like obviously there's no shading on black so it's just straight onto the edge highlights And then blues tend to be a lot more forgiving, like painting ultramarines is very forgiving on the shading, really. You can actually be quite rough with it, and uh, as long as your edge highlights are sharp, you don't really notice it very much. That's the thing as well. You could you could spend so much more time on this. Like everything that I've shown today, you could spend way more time. Like you could get this as smooth as you want. It's just whether you want to dedicate that time to it. You could spend like a day literally just blending and shading a piece like this before you get onto any highlights. <laughs> Now I've got that shading in there. I think I might just go back and neaten up everything. Um, how long have we got? No, oh, like we've still got about half an hour. So let's go back, neaten up those transitions. Uh, flash kit's only for edges. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the next stage is flash kits. It's yellow. looks actually really, really nice in person. If I do say so myself. Yeah, on stream it just doesn't show up those transitions but in person it looks awesome <laughs> uh, that's the bit I meant earlier about weird unaligned sculpt such areas really annoy me and always find them later during painting when you're not sure what to do about it yeah if this was like for anything else other than a paint along I probably would have like I don't know what I would have done either 
sanded it flat or something else, but started again, but and it's fine for a paint along. Yeah, so your is really nice to glaze over any of the shading that you're not too happy with. And it'll just soften it out a bit. And this coverage is really bad, but that means it's good for good for glazing. Uh, are you actually faster than anyone who tries to paint along with you? You would be for me. You'd be too fast for me. Uh, I don't know. Like, the thing is, I, I aim to get to certain places by the end of the day for paint alongs. So if I ever, like, don't reach out or whatever, it's because I'm trying to be more organized about it. Like, I need to get to... The point where like this is mostly edge highlighted and everything by the end of the day because the last one that we did for the stormcast took way too long like it took like four streams and like really if i was if i was painting this for myself i would spend ages at this stage just like blending everything making sure it's smooth but i don't really have that luxury with streaming because we need, we need to get to a, a reasonable point by the end of the stream. I'm trying to keep this down to as few streams as possible. So ideally it would be like two streams. But yeah, I, I could literally spend like days just making sure stuff was smooth if I, if I was really aiming for a higher level, but. Four streams, that's like four to six hours. Um, Yeah, I mean, even that was pretty quick, actually, because the box art for that Stormcast took like five or so days, I think, at least. So I think it was like f four, maybe five streams, but the streams were like seven-ish hours long, so with a little bit of a break and stuff like that in between. So, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Like, did pretty well, to be honest. But it's not really... Like, it's not really up to the same box art level. Like, it's close, but it's not... Like, you can you can tell the difference. It's, uh, Aiden's one's better. It's got free hand on and stuff like that, so... There's just certain limits to what I can really do on stream. Because, yeah, your, your concentration is broken. Lots of things are going on, so it's, uh... It is difficult. But we try to get as close as we can to it. Interstellar music so good. Yeah. I think this is just random epic songs. Epic soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't actually bad for that Stormcast for the amount of stuff that was on it. Um, it was actually a bad amount of time. Like I say, this Space Marine would probably take at least like two and a half days in the studio. And that's a constant like painting that's very focused. Um, See, so yeah, we we're not doing too bad at all. We're not doing too bad. The thing is, though, um, with this one, it's going to be more like go away and get the the like the rest of the arms, the backpack, everything else like that. I'm going to have to set as like homework because I mean, there's no way that we could get it done anywhere close to box art within two streams. Otherwise, 
I'm hoping like once most people know what they're doing with the body, then just like doing the arms and the backpack will, will be pretty straightforward. Uh, Neil Buchanan style. <laughs> Here's what I finished earlier. Yeah, it's just it's gonna have to be like that because otherwise it's gonna be it's gonna be about two days of us painting just armor, which is not only boring for everyone to watch. It's uh, it means that the streams are gonna go on for like three weekends instead of two, sort of thing. I think two streams is about what people's. Uh, what people's concentration limit is generally. I noticed with the stormcast it tended to drop off and participation dropped off, so I'm trying to keep it sweet and to the point, you know. So interesting, let's see how this applies. Um Still gonna water this down. I don't know why I always start on like these edges of the greaves for the first highlight. Something like that. It's weird how much darker this looks in person. The uh, shading. If I move around these lights. Yeah, it's weird. I'll have to take another picture and see how it looks, but so uh, this goes all the way down to death, um, death claw, death claw, uh, death claw brown at the bottom of these legs. So just for reference, that's how dark it is, but it doesn't show up very well on camera. So the aim with this first highlight is that we can get the next highlight within it. So don't do it too fine. Do it fine enough that you can you think you can get another highlight within within it. I think I'm just going to concentrate on the front of this for now. Let's we'll see how see how far we get. It'd be nice to get a bit like completely kind of finished, I guess. Uh, is there a video around of how you did that yellow? I'm getting an Avalon sun sunset vibe. Uh, you can basically just check back in the vod today. Um, We've done all of this today. This is the paint along that we're doing. So this is not day one. The aim is to basically get as close as we can to like the heavy metal paint jobs. So and it's conducted like every every Sunday we'll do it. Um, but it basically it was a mix of scrag, scrag brown and. Um, Uriel. You could use you could just use Avalon to be honest. It's uh, perfectly good. But for this we, we try to match it exactly to the, the heavy metal recipe. Welcome. 
Padge, Padgical, thank you very much for the follow. There we go, guys. You got, you got some teeths. You got some teeths there. Yeah, so we'll probably do that in a couple of weekends' time, and it gives people enough time to get a few more points. And you basically earn one point per per minute that you're that you're hanging about in the chat. So. And the previous giveaways that we've done, I've still not given it to um to Oscar. I think because he was coming to he was coming to Nottingham soon, so I've been waiting to to give it to him. But this is the last giveaway that we did. Doesn't show so well against <laughs> against why does it? And of course, Sarah Khan that we did. Uh, I'm still waiting to give this to him. So. Uh, looking crispy, so fat, <laughs> so far, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bootham. That was the last giveaway. So the next one is a three day commission piece of your choice. So you could get, you get a character done or you get loads of stuff done. Your painting skills are amazing. Thank you, man. That's very kind of you. I've got a lot of like half finished projects at the moment, unfortunately, but this is like other things that we've done on the stream during the week. The camera doesn't focus. It's a pain. And like working on a chaplain at the moment. This is how far we are with it. We've done all this on the recent streams. If anyone's new here and go back and check the VODs, all of this, apart from the book, I think was uh, maybe a few other little bits of the legs. We're painting on stream so you can get a good idea of how we did that. Just following the heavy metal stuff. And then another recent thing that close to getting done, but still a few tiny bits to do was uh, was Drizar and non-metallic Drizar. So, uh, did you, what did you use for the red bolters on the bike? I think it was just Mephiston. So Mephiston Evil Suns for the first chunky highlight. Then Troll Slayer, and then Fire Dragon Bright, Fire Dragon Bright and White for like the spot highlights. Uh, would that cover my squat? Yeah, three days. You get you get a fantastic looking squat for three days. A three day commission is is pretty decent. You can get a, a fair amount of stuff done. No, I'm out of time. Plus, if I really enjoy it, I might well spend a little bit of extra time, you know, you know, just a cheeky bit of extra time. I would like a box of 30 Stormcast Eternal Spear Shafts. Oh my god. In three days. That's that's a bit. I had I had half a day apiece for Welcome. those for those Stormcast shafts, I'll have you know. <laughs> Greta, thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, I, I literally had like half a day per shaft. On the on the stormcast from Dominion, just for an idea of how long those uh, spear shafts take.
We're almost done with the front here. We'll start to get on with the uh, the next stage, the final stage of highlight, which will be dawn yellow. So if you have that to hand, then uh, that's what we're going to be needing next. See, you're all scrambling for the teeth now. We didn't expect to unlock this uh, giveaway so soon. Feels like it's not been long since the last giveaway. Uh, you guys reckon the end of July for four to five months? Uh, sorry, I'm reading two different things now. Uh, Pagical, that's so nice, dude. Thank you for that subscription, man. That's very kind. You only just joined the channel. You only just followed, and now you're just coming in here with your Prime sub. Thank you very much, man. That's very kind. You guys reckon end of July for Orc Codex release is too optimistic? I don't know. It could be quite soon, actually. I, I mean, I don't know, but it could be quite soon. God, it's so warm, it's so warm. Uh, Got to show the love for your skill in the hobby. Thank you, man. That's that's super kind. It means a lot when people just come in like that and they're like, "Yep, this guy's worth a um, sub." That means a lot. They just announced a new preview on the tenth of July for orcs for orcs in forty k. Oh, okay. Do you know that it's for orcs? That's pretty cool. I'm guessing it's some more beast snagger stuff, maybe. There's still a lot of stuff that we've not seen yet. Without saying too much. I had the great honor of working on the beast snagger stuff, so. Some very nice stuff still to come. There's also mention of Tyranids. Hmm. Interesting. Is there to be a giveaway today? Being away for a bit? No, not today, Action Villain. It'll be in a couple of weeks' time. I need to officially announce it, so... So that it gives people enough uh, enough time to, uh, to get some points together, right? Last Games, hello. Good evening. Um... The old red grass paper thingy isn't good. That's how... That's good to know. I believe it is foam seal where the AP doesn't, which seems nice. What is that? The pallets? Uh, like in Portland? Or... A wet sock as a wet pallet. <laughs> you can use anything. It's such, I mean, it's such basic stuff. Uh, you can use a sponge and just a bit of baking paper. It's a very basic technology. But yeah, I, I use a, a red grass. It's nice to have, but it's not really necessary. You can make up your own one very easily.
Gosh, I'm struggling in this heat a bit today. It's uh, 29 degrees. Get a bit further with this, uh, with the highlights on this yellow, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see how far we can get in the next hour or so. Looking through the Discord on the paint along, everyone here is doing a fantastic job. They are, they're doing an amazing job. They're putting me to shame. Some absolutely amazing, uh, amazing work on there. That's something else we'll do before the end of the stream, is to have a look, see, see what everyone's progress is like. It's, um, it's very impressive. Some very talented people on there. If anyone wants to join along with this paint along, you have like a a Space Marine Intercessor or like the Assault Intercessor. This VOD will be up, so feel free to join along at any point. As long as you're, well, you don't even have to catch up by the next stream. You can do it at any point. We technically still have up most of the VODs from the first paint along, which was the, the Stormcast. So, um... Feel free to join in on any of them that might be interesting to you. I think this one will be going up onto the YouTube as well, so. Uh, I might get the AP wet palette at this place that I'm ordering stuff from. Uh, it's 18 to 19 euros. Yeah. yeah, it can take work some to find parchment paper. So I, I tell you what, Reynolds parchment paper is really good. If you're in the UK, Sainsbury's parchment paper is good. I've even tried some just Amazon basic stuff, but I can't remember what brand it was, and it and it worked fine. You just have to test a few different things and see which uh, which works best for you. What's your YouTube channel? <laughs> It's, it should be just Infernal Brush, but there's nothing on it currently. But I was working on, well, working on putting up some videos for Mephiston at some point soon. I'm doing Mephiston as a commission for somebody, so I thought it'd be quite a good one to show um, various different techniques on that. Because there's a little bit of armor on that, there's a little bit of uh, freehand. So yeah, I'll have to um I'll have to get you the link or post it in the Discord. Um There's nothing on it yet, but there will be. There will be. I promise. That is my that is the next thing on my list. Now, I've only been going like five months on, on this channel, so it's uh still early days I guess. And anyone who's um watching this today, feel free to join the Discord. It's an awesome little community. I've got all the recipes to this. And many other things, many other official heavy metal recipes on there. Feel free to join it. And there's a bunch of recipes on there for you. There's also a really awesome work in progress and finish section for you to share your share your work with everyone. Got some very talented people on there. Some golden demon winners, some slayer sword winners, some god everyone, some heavy metal painters. Uh, HP Hatecraft, thank you very much for the follow. Any tips for a newbie to the hobby? Um, yeah, get yourself, well, okay. So the most important things I think a newbie should have is a good light. And this is gonna cost a little bit of money, but get yourself a good uh, hobby lamp. I really like the daylight ones, the daylight company ones, but there's, there's multiple ones. As long as it gives out a good quality daylight or daylight spectrum, uh, light then get yourself a, a good one of those because lighting is incredibly important you don't want to be able to see what you're doing right the next thing is to get yourself some good brushes even if it's just one brush if you can only stretch the one brush get yourself a good quality like sable brush um, so I use Winsor Newton series sevens which are yes are on the higher end you know they're expensive uh, but there's also like the Raphael 8404, I think it is. Is it 8404? 
Uh, do I have one here? Pretty certain it's the eight four zero fours. Five thousand, six thousand Kelvin for a good daylight lamp. Yes. Yeah, just get yourself a good daylight spectrum lamp with plenty of uh, plenty of lumen as well. That's something else you want to look out for is a high lumen because that's the actual strength of the light coming out of it. So you want a daylight spectrum with a high lumen. 5.4K from aquarium lamps, just perfect, awesome. Yeah, if that's something like that works for you, then that's great. I have a a daylight Lumi and, and a Luminos. Um, the Luminos is amazingly well built, but it's also not cheap. It's like 170 pounds, basically. But it's an incredibly well made uh, lamp. Uh, Crafty Gobbo, thank you very much for the follow. I would say these are probably the most important things. And then maybe make yourself a wet palette. You don't have to like stretch to buying one. You could just make one out of some sponge. Like a, a thin uh, plastic container. And some parchment paper. You should be able to just get a, a local grocery store. Uh, you should make a video series giving recommendations on products. Call it Pezzes. <laughs> I, I do have a list of products I was going to put into the Discord. Um, so I really need to actually just get that up for now and then add to it. There's some really good things that I recommend that people get now. It's just if you can stretch to it. A good pair of snips is also really good. Like these are quite expensive again, the display ones. But these are like awesome for cutting stuff off of sprues. Really sharp, really nice quality snips. These are like Gundam, Gundam like quality snips. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. It's just little stuff like that, really. That's like good quality products. Um, if you can eventually stretch them, then then go for it. You won't look back. Redgrass have a new light going on to Kickstarter. Yeah, I mean, if those work, then I'm sure they're probably pretty good because they're. Because they're they're made for like uh, that's the thing that you don't have to you, you don't have to be beholden to any one company, right? You'll see a lot of red grass stuff that people use in this hobby, but absolutely do not think that it, it's necessary to own red grass stuff. It's um it's one of those things. It's like nice things to have maybe, but you don't you don't need them. And if you're just new to it, then I'll probably just keep it fairly basic, to be honest. Um, gun damn good. <laughs> LED one will ruin your eyes. What do you mean? My my lamps are LEDs. Got no problems. Broken toad. Yeah, apparently people have you know people enjoy broken toad brushes so. It, these are just products that work for me. Uh, there's going to be variations there that work that are going to work for you. But right, I think we're going to go on to like the last highlight stage very soon. Very very soon. Seven hour streams do take it out of you a bit. I'm feeling, beginning to feel it. You guys must be like struggling a bit as well. Anyone who's not used to painting for long hours. Welcome. Who is that? Lord Inquisitor Ignis. Thank you very much for the follow. What you need is patience. Yes. Some some things you cannot buy. And patience and perseverance perseverance if you if you make mistakes and the most important things because you're gonna make mistakes everyone does
doing fine here, Pez. Uh, been going since eight, eight, and probably have a few hours left in me. God, I don't know. This heat has taken it out of me today, laddie. Maybe you got it a bit cooler there in uh, in Cornwall. Yeah, normally I can go for like twelve hour days quite easily. Streaming and heat is uh, struggling a bit now. Yeah, like I am no stranger to long, to long hours, but today is 18 degrees. Oh man, I wish it was 18 degrees here. Jeez, feel like I need an ice pack or something. Some ice pack in front of the fan. Just... Uh, even if we get the front bit of this done today, then people get the general idea of what we're doing. If somehow we can all get to the point where we're done with the yellow by the next stream. We can easily get this entire figure done in two streams, hopefully. I've uh, been using the new GW synthetic brushes for a bit, went back to my Series 7 uh, now, and oh my god, so good. The Series 7s are amazing, like, so I've had... I've had the synthetic brushes for like three or four years now. I think they they gave us to them. They they gave us these in the studio like three or four years ago to test, and uh, they good. But one of my pet peeves is that they do this. They like they stain really easily, so it's very difficult to work out what's if if there's paint on the brush or if it's clean or if it's not so that's, that's my one uh, issue with them a good tip for mistakes is to have a big jug of clean water right next to you uh, and the millisecond you make mistakes with your paint job throw the mini into water yeah you can do that you can do that it wouldn't be the first time that I've like knocked a mini onto my uh, onto my wet palette or something like that and then like Somehow it's got like it's ended up with paint all over it. Dunk it straight away, then you might be uh, you might be okay with that. But yeah, basically water is <laughs> is the key there, isn't it? Like I'm an avid brush licker, so I will literally just lick my brush very quickly and try to remove any mistakes. Um, but yeah, not everyone wants to do that, right? You can just have water right next to you. The key is being quick. You've got to be very, very quick with it and just uh, get the water onto it, dilute it, and take it off. You don't have much time with acrylics. 19 degrees in Norwich, which has been raining one uh, one off all day. Uh, it's been raining here as well. Like, that's the thing. It looks really miserable outside, but it's so warm. It's just like... Pretty much perfect painting weather here today. <laughs> Okay, laddie, okay. You just, uh, you just, uh, wind him up now, eh? Perfect painting weather all day. Uh, I love a bit of spirit box. All right, okay, let's go on to the, uh, the next highlight, and then at least we've got the progress to the next highlight stage. Um, you guys get the general idea of what we're, what we're going for. Oh god, it's so warm. 29 degrees, you'll need lightning reflexes exactly, yeah. The paint's dry before it even gets to your... Before it gets to, from the brush to your miniature a lot of the time in this weather. Okay, so we want some Dawn Yellow. Okay, it looks like it's separated a lot there. And I put it I this is one of the ones that I decanted into uh into a dropper bottle. I 
30 degrees, uh, 32 degrees Celsius here and it's 7 p.m. You got to wait until the evening to go out here. I bet, I bet. Do you not want to be outside in like over 30 degrees? Not for very long anyway. Forgot completely those are some really nice looking models. Though if you're looking at the ones in this gallery, these are not mine. The ones behind it are mine. These are just some references for the um, for the Imperial Fist. All this stuff in the gallery behind here is actually mine. All the stuff that I've painted for Heavy Metal. Uh, it's so humid here. Yeah, it's humid here as well. So how long have we got now? We've got like an hour left. So we'll see how far we can get with this last highlight stage. And... Um, I meant the one being painted and <laughs> that. Thank you, Anne. That's very kind of you. There we go. Okay, so I'm actually going to switch to a finer brush for this as well. Try and get sharpest, sharpest highlights on this. It's very, very thin, this Dawn Yellow, so I'm just hoping that it's going to do the job properly. Uh, I remember it was 40 degrees over here about two years ago. I was baking. Whereabouts are you, Lord Inquisitor? I think in the UK we recorded like the highest temperature a couple of years ago as well of being like, what was it, 38 degrees or something like that. I believe that it got up to around about that where I am. Yes, that was a that was a very hot year. It's in the UK, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, if you have a look on this... Um, it's got the highest recorded temperature on here is 40.7. I think that must have been inside the house somewhere. And the low of like minus two. I've had this for like quite a few years. So uh, yeah, 29 is the, is what it is at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, at some point it got up to 40 degrees. Grim. I do not cope well in hot weather. I might well like blend out these little specular highlights a little bit more than that and go back with some of the flash kits, but I'll just leave that like that for now. Uh, you getting psyched for 40k orc reveals next Saturday? Greenskins uh, getting some love these days. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't be happy with all the greenskin love. <laughs> like, obviously, I I saw all that stuff like a year or so ago, but yeah. I am very happy that it's finally orc time to be in the in the limelight. I guess. But I've always been a massive Orc fan, so. Uh, 
Uh, happy that more Xenos get in time in the sun. Yeah, like it would be nice to see some other stuff as well. Uh, it was the UK. How is your paint still wet? <laughs> it's only wet because it's on a wet palette, I think. Uh, Ignis. Uh, did you paint a lot of the Beast Snagger stuff? Yeah. Well, I painted a fair amount of it, yeah. Painted uh, Zogrod. I painted some things that are not yet out, so I can't, like... There's, there's some there's some good stuff coming, guys. There's some good stuff. Uh, excited to get back to painting when all the stuff arrives. I've been thinking of starting a game for some and then decided sometime and started I found the Indomitus box. Nice. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, someone else mentioned they'd seen some Indomitus boxes knocking about recently, so... I've got some of the Blade Guard, actually. Did pick up some of the. I uh, picked up. What was it? The Blade Guard and a. <laughs> I've got so much stuff to paint. So I've got Dominion, I've got the Blitz and Blade Guard. And I've got uh, the Vampire, the Female Vampire Lord, which is pretty cool. Wanted to do like a non metallic red on it, like a really shiny, really shiny red. I need to get. Bit more practice with some non metallic, see. So. This paintbrush is struggling, it's too warm. Uh, how many things, what base sizes, what colors, what other stat lines? Pick, sorry, it didn't happen. Still have all my Necrons include, uh, from the Indomitus. Yeah, so the um the the next paint along will be a, a Necron. They might well do just like a standard Space Marine at some point as well, like a I'm sorry, I know people get bored by them, but maybe like a Ultra Marine or something like that, just as a good training exercise. This is not quite as straightforward a, um as a regular Welcome. Space Marine. Uh it's a crunchy nut, thank you very much for the follow. I'm an Eldar player and they do need love badly. <laughs> uh, one day, one day, Tim, one day, one day. Yeah, some great looking models. The Indomitus ones are those push fit, but they are multi-part if you get them separately. Uh, yeah, the I think the Blade Guard are, I don't know, can you still get, can you still get the push fit ones as well? I'm not sure. Yeah, the Blade Guard that I got are multi-part ones. They're quite pricey, aren't they? Like, they're about £30 for for three models, but I think there's quite a lot of, like, bits on them and stuff. Like, maybe they're quite customizable. I don't know. They're still available, right? Okay, yeah. Amazing paint job. Do you have any VODs of Illumineth Realm Lords? No, I don't think we've actually painted any Illumineth on on the stream yet, so. Uh, getting back into Warhammer uh, and want to paint a new set of the highest showcase standard. Um, I think there might be some recipes, Crunchy Nut. There might be some recipes on the Discord for the heavy metal lumineth but i don't we haven't painted any yet on the stream so maybe one day though maybe one day Uh, 
Uh, Blade Guard is one of the best multi part primary kits from GW, right? Okay. Okay. I've not actually opened them yet, so. Uh, uh don't mind the push fit now, at least. Uh, like the poses in the box and the sprues looked fine while I Google about it. Yeah, I missed out on Indomitus. I was still I was still working at GW when Indomitus came out, so So I think next stream we'll come back to the yellow and do a little bit of that battle damage. Um so by the way, this is this this is the paint along minute that we do every single Sunday now. So I'm hoping it's only going to take about two Sundays to get it done. This being the first. Um, so the next stream, which will be next Sunday, I think we'll come back and do some of the uh, the chipping and stuff like that. The stuff that I'm working on during the week. So hopefully tomorrow uh, will be the next stream for this. Getting on with this uh, Chaplin on a bike and this is how far we got so far 99% of this has been painted on stream so you can always go back and have a look in the VODs for that But this has taken like four to five days so far so not too bad for that amount of time not too bad yeah. That's the the regular streaming schedule is that uh, I'll be looking to collect up the recipes when I get the underworld team delivered you keep reminding me, I need to go and get that um, Vampire Underworlds team whenever the hell that comes back into stock. I don't know. But... There's quite a few of them that I really would like. Too many figures, not enough time to paint them. Chappie looks absolutely boss. Thank you, Tim. Uh, for, uh, first I thought about painting the Dark Angels, but I'll go with Ultramarines. I think the lighter color scheme, uh, I think I like the lighter color scheme more. I'm so tempted to go back and do some Dark Angels. I was looking at the Dark Angel like law recently. So like my very first, well, pretty much my first proper army was a Dark Angel army. Many years ago, about 20 years ago now, say. <laughs> it's a long time since I've actually played uh 40k so I do love dark angels uh the vampire team is cool but everyone is painting them all at the moment yeah cuz it's like one of the best teams in the ever I think the paint job, the miniatures, like everything is on point. What's your thoughts on Space Wolves? Love Space Wolves. Uh, that's why I want to make my first army with. I absolutely adore Space Wolves as well. Um, in fact, if you look back in the VODs of this stream, um, you'll see me painting a Space Wolf that we did for a giveaway eventually. Tim, Tim in chat. Uh, Tim of the Stars ended up winning that Space Wolf. Yeah, I absolutely love Space Wolves. There's a Space Wolf that I did for White Dwarf that is in this uh, little gallery here. Let's see if I can... You might see it pop up in the gallery. There's a, there's a Space Marine that I... Uh, a Space Wolf that I painted for White Dwarf. Last time I painted it was 20 years ago. I did Black Templars back then. Nice. So you're you're coming back to the hobby after 20 years. That's cool. Well, it seems like a lot of people are coming back to it. Pez paints a mean space. <laughs> Yeah, so do you remember when the Primaris first came out in the the 40k box set? I can't even remember what it's called. 
The first, the first showing of all the new Primaris. We decided to do a, um, a kind of a challenge for White Dwarf, which was converting those uh, space, the first Primaris from that box set, into different chapters. So Max did a um, Iron Hands. We had loads of them. Chris did an Imperial Fist. Like uh, there was loads of them, basically done by the Heavy Metal team. And I chose to do a Space Wolf, and I converted mine with some bits, some Space Wolf bits. You guys might have seen it in the in the White Dwarf. It's also on it's on the Instagram Dark Imperium. That was it, yeah. So technically, technically, I painted the first ever Primaris Space Wolf. Technically. I mean, if we're getting technical about it. Hey, Brush, you ever used a capture card? Uh, in fact, did I paint this? Maybe, maybe it was Max, actually, who did some color variants. I might be wrong on that one. Uh, you ever use a capture card? I use a... Oh, what is it? I use an Elgato um, capture, what do you call it, like the inline one, the USB. That's what I use for my 4K camera. Camlink, that's the one, Camlink 4K, there you go. Iron Hands would have been difficult, not many parts out there. Yeah, he did an amazing job on, that, on, the, um, on the Iron Hands. I guess mine was like very subtle sort of conversions. So like even to the point where I cut out like a, I cut out a diamond and uh, put it onto the, like the bolt pistol and all that kind of stuff. Just like very subtle little things. I've still got it, but it's, it's slightly um, damaged at the moment. So. <laughs> I need to repair that so I can actually show it again on stream. And poor thing's been damaged a couple of times now. Or like broken off of the bits broken on it. Oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. And there are any good places to find competition level paint jobs? Uh, the Discord? <laughs> I don't know, there's like loads of people on Instagram and... Uh, I, I mean, you can, there's, there's a website called Demon Winner, I think, and there's a Golden Demon one, and you can always have a look at like past Golden Demon winners. Um, there's loads of websites. Uh, uh, I'm sure some people in chat can 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 let you know about some websites for competition stuff. And back in the day it used to be like cool mini or not, but is it putty putty and paint? Golden Demon Compendium on Insta, yep. Still have most of the old stuff. I think it was the third edition starter set, Space Marines versus Dark Elder. Was that fourth edition, maybe? Because I remember that set. Is that fourth, or maybe I'm wrong? 
Sadly, some heads missing, so I might uh, get some of those bit sights. Yeah, some of that old stuff's worth a lot of money nowadays. It's uh, it's hard to get hold of. Particularly like old metal figures. Some of those are like skyrocketed in value. God, it's so warm. Go on Demon Convenium, yeah. Paul Norton's Iron Raven's probably my favorite Primaris chapter. He did a great job on those. Yep, yeah. Remember those metal goth rockers? They were eight pound for a blister of three, and now they're thirty pound each. You know what? Yeah, I would even probably pay thirty pound each because I really want those goth rockers. <laughs> they're super difficult to get hold of now. Um, yeah, there's a few old miniatures in metal that I'd really like to get hold of. And I blend this these uh, little specular highlights up a little bit more with the just the flash gets in the door nearly. Uh, fine Citadel miniatures such as Wizard uh, with a submachine gun <laughs> uh, might be able to hook you up remind me on Tuesday really? oh my god laddie you would make my year if you managed to find me a full set of those or just, just any of them laddie any of them I'm desperate for those goth rockers are amazing It's one of those things I really wish I hadn't missed out on, you know. It's just because they're actually pretty decent sculpts as well, like uh, iconic, and uh, yeah, actually nice sculpts. Do you love some of the old metal sculpts? It's real hard to stop them getting chipped. Yeah, it is. It is. But you can get them super smooth with those Tamiya sponges. 
Oh, you can get you can get those metals so smooth. Bit of patience in the Tamiya sponge. Starting to look all right. Uh, like paint the mini and literally never touch it again. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I remember some of the studio, uh, some of the old studio models were metal and um, you know, forever like touching them up because they would chip so easily. Gonna lighten up a bit more some of these towards the top of the the uh, feet and things like that. Some of the flash gets just like thin glazes there, just to just to draw a bit more attention to that bit. I guess probably wouldn't normally go that far on a on an heavy metal figure a lot of the time, but this is a bit of a one-off. Uh, Muse Chick, thank you very much for the follow. Tamiya Sponge is getting the love again. I know, I need a sponsorship from Tamiya Sponges. They're amazing. That's a really good product. That I could probably not live without nowadays. I could live without it, but I would struggle. The, the Tamiya Sponges are glorious for... Um, Specifically for metal figures, but I use them on plastics as well. So, uh, where do you buy them from? You can get them anywhere. You can get them loads of places. Uh, like most hobby places have them. Like I think, Element, Wayland. Uh, yeah, most places that stock, I think you can even get them on Amazon, so. Uh, couldn't live, couldn't live without sanding sponges. They completely changed my cleanup and assembly game. Yeah. I think it's just because they're so like soft, they can. I don't know. It's just super useful. You can like be relatively rough with things, but the two thousand grit ones, anyway. I don't know about the other ones, but be relatively rough with it and not take off any detail. Just yeah, they're really nice, nice product. Now, that's something that someone mentioned from the stream, and I was like, oh, I'll give these a go. Welcome. And I was very pleasantly surprised. 
Uh, Vocus Populus, thank you very much for the follow. I'm just going to use the side of the brush to try and get the edge highlight up here. Alright, I think I need to set an achievable goal for people next time. Do you think it's achievable to get all of the yellow done by next week, guys? Or do we do, like, a stream and a half on the yellow? Or... I want to set it so it's relatively achievable for everyone. We've got a fair chunk of the way with it today, but it's probably, you know, another few hours to do on like the backpack and everything else but two weeks <laughs> what just have the next one in two weeks time we could do that should be fine with homework <laughs> I feel like I want to um, tidy up some of these highlights and everything. My dog ate the model. <laughs> what does everyone reckon? Does everyone want to come back next week, next Sunday and do it? Or I don't know. We could always put it up for vote in the Discord. I'm thinking most people have probably made a decent amount of chunk of progress today, but... At least you get a general idea of what we're kind of doing now. This is probably a little bit more blended than what what we should have done, but it's fine. I think it's fine. There's only really like two highlights to it. You can go up a little bit and add a little bit of white into this. Uh, is it dawn? Dawn yellow. Uh, the bully stole my mini. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will be fine with it. Is anyone really enjoying painting it? So far? And it'll get more enjoyable, like uh, the more the, the details and stuff that we do next. And yes, you're enjoying it. Awesome. Serranus, your stuff is looking absolutely amazing. We're going to go and have a look at the Discord very soon. So, if you want to get up any pictures in there, then feel free. The one nice thing about yellow is that you can sort of play about with it quite a lot. You can glaze back, like if your highlights go up too bright, you can always glaze back with the, the previous highlight a little bit and it'll just soften it out. The thing that makes yellows quite difficult to work with actually makes them very nice to, to glaze with, so the properties of yellow. So you're really starting to get a nice looking yellow there now. I'm enjoying what I'm painting, that's good. That's good, laddie. You enjoy your, your work, that's important. Yeah, whatever you're painting, whatever you're painting today, as long as you're enjoying it. 
This has been a, I know this has been a long session for a lot of people, so. Who aren't professional figure painters or just, you know. Hobbyists, I understand it's a long, it's a long old stretch, isn't it? Full day of painting. The VOD will always be there if you need to go back to it. Are you still streaming, Saratness? Are you streaming much longer today, or...? Seriously needed to stop. My thumb went numb. <laughs> you got a numb thumb. I think once you get past the first stages of this recipe, it actually becomes really nice to, to paint. It's actually quite chill once you uh, once you get into it. People get scared of yellow, but it's really not that not that difficult. As long as you get a nice solid base coat of the yellow. I think that's where most of it stems from is people trying to base coat with a brush over over black, um over a black undercoat or something like that. It's no wonder that people struggle. Uh, I was struggling to paint the black details in. You st really? What paint were you using for that, Tanner? Using you got chaos black, haven't you? Why were you struggling to do that? I know it can be a bit of a pain if uh, you're trying to not get the black onto the yellow, right? And you got to be quite neat with it. Uh, I think I'm done for today. Not used to sitting and painting so long. Me too, soon, Papa. Me too. I've uh, been sneaking into Serantis' stream now and again. He's doing an amazing job. Serantis' work is absolutely outstanding. I'm going to go check on that in a second. Before we probably... Before we probably end today's stream. I just... There was something that extra that I wanted to do. Just to see how it looks. Um, so in the recipe it says we go up to white. As like the... The final sort of highlight. So... Just wanted to see if that's uh, got some AK white here, some of the AK third gen white. So I'm gonna try just going up a little bit to this, in like the very corners, just to give people the general idea of what we're gonna be aiming at for the finished product. And we've actually still got chipping to do, but we'll we'll do that next stream. So maybe a little bit of dawn, <laughs> voice crack. Maybe a little bit of dawn into that um, into that white, so it's not just stark white. Um, so yeah, mix a little bit in between, and then just get some spot highlights on like the corners and things, just to really make it kind of pop. Welcome. Uh, Jester, thank you very much. Jester Head, thank you very much for the follow. So we're just going to apply this just to like the very, 
furthest highlights that we want to do is towards like the top of the knee pads. Anywhere that's really going to catch the light. And the corners of any armor panels. Just that final highlight just to make everything pop out a bit more. the bottom of the feet here. So yeah, something like that I guess is what we're sort of aiming for. It's maybe a little bit harsh down here. A little bit too obvious. Not looking too bad. I think I'll probably go back and like smooth some bits out and all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of what we're aiming for for now, so. Feels like it needs a little bit of something there. Not looking too bad. Uh, I just got it on the yellow heart. It was hard with my numb thumb. <laughs> so probably what I'll do is just to glaze out some of these areas. We've got a nice looking yellow though. It's popping. It's just. Some of these highlights need to be glazed out a tiny bit just to smooth them out a bit, but it's looking all right. And then, yeah, obviously I need to take that highlight around there, finish the back, obviously. But we got, we got some way today. We got some way, considering the amount of glazing that we got done. You know, we didn't do too badly. All right, let's have a quick look through the Discord and see what everyone is up to. Hey, Papa, it's looking good. Right, let's have a quick. Let's have a quick look at that, eh? Let's turn down this music a little bit. Papa is looking awesome, dude. You're absolutely getting there. I know you struggle a little bit, but I, I never want to paint it yellow again. Look, all right? <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Look, maybe we started off. A little bit trickier, all right. Maybe this is a bit. I think it's still looking fine. I think we just started off with something that was a little bit tricky for a yellow. I'm gonna need a drink very quickly. <laughs> Ooh. 
Sorry about that. Just suddenly caught up with me after hours that I hadn't. Um, Matty, action villain. Oh my god, everyone's uploading stuff. Yeah, look at this. Oh, that's looking cool. That's looking really nice, action villain. I wouldn't be worried about this shininess. It's not like a big deal. I'm really liking that yellow. You got some really nice shading going on here. That's looking good, dude. Like, you got a highlight around the edge of there. Like, you're getting the idea with it now. Like, there's nothing stopping you from going back and forth if you're like. But I don't, I don't really think you need to with this. Yeah. It's looking good. That's, that's looking super, super sharp and, uh, and nicely blended. Really well done, dude. Uh, where are we? Serantis. Serantis has got his finished one. Or like, close to getting finished, right? This is looking cool. Oh my god, that's so smooth, Serantis. That's so smooth, these blends. Very, very nice. Oh, crispy. Crispy indeed. Very, very nice. Looking great, Serantis. Very impressed, sir. Very, very impressed. Well done, and thank you for for taking part today. It's been it's been awesome having you take part. Matty's there with his base coat. He's got a nice solid base coat on that. Start you started to blend up to to Uriel there, looking good, looking really smooth. You guys, you guys are looking much better than mine, much much better than mine. You put in mine to shame. Looking great, like just take your time with it. Papa's one like earlier on. I think he just went slightly heavy with that deeper shade, you know. I think that's all that happened there, uh Papa was that he just went slightly too too harsh with the with the shading. But I mean it's still looking cool. Tanf How far did you get Tanf? Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Up close. Oh, oh that's looking nice. Look at that yellow. Look at that little reflective highlight on his on his groin there. Oh, nice, sir. Uh, very, very nice. <laughs> That's very cool. Look at this. Tanith, Tanith can paint when he puts his mind to it. Some pretty good results right there. There's some amazing stuff in here, dude. Uh, this loser again. Who's this guy? God, he's such a... Don't pay any attention to him. His stuff's rubbish. Ryzen... Oh yeah, I saw this earlier. This is looking cool. Really, really smooth shading there. Really nice. Very subtle and smooth. Really nice. Yeah, I, I seriously need to smooth out some of mine. I'll see if I can take a final picture and upload it. It's looking... Uh, it's looking a little bit harsh compared to some of your guys' ones. Super smooth stuff going on. If I take a picture at least, see what it looks like on camera. Okay, can I share this now? Share this, upload it to the Discord. Yeah, there's a lot of bits on mine I'd really like to smooth out, so. You guys, you guys are doing amazing stuff, dude. Absolutely amazing. So, okay, I uploaded mine from the end of today's stream. Like I say, I'll probably um, smooth out some, some bits. Uh, fantastic. Fantastic stuff.